There's this new vault box thing that, in my opinion, exploits every single one of the psychological vulnerabilities that affect collectors. So far in their five previous releases, they were only operating with US and Boolean coins, but their new release is all about ancient coins. So, hey, here I am to inform you what it is all about why for me this is such a bad deal for the collector, and finally, make a point that this is not a product for collectors. Instead, this is nothing but a casino that transforms ancient coins into casino chips. Alright, what's the main idea here? You buy a box, it costs $649 plus taxes. In this box, there are three coins, slapped by NGC. Two of them are what's called black core coins of lower value, and you can get either a third black core coin of higher value, or if you're really lucky, a red core coin. The value of this coin might let you break even, or even get more than what you paid for. You know, coin collecting is a wonderful hobby. It really is. It stimulates the mind with all the research you have to make. It is a wonderful opportunity to socialize. You can share your findings and your excitement for a coin with other people. The cataloging and organizing of our collections is a good opportunity to forget about the problems of our daily lives and just focus on something we enjoy. And it's an opportunity to practice some gratitude that we have the privilege of enjoying this little, this, these little pieces of history, right? But, well, there's a good reason why this channel's most popular video is titled The Dark Side of Coin Collecting. If a coin collector goes to hell, he or she would most likely be condemned for the sin of greed. You and me, we are... we're fragile beings, prone to overindulging and becoming addicted to things we like, even good and productive parts of our lives can be done excessively, like these collections that give us this wonderful glimpse into the past. We're very prone to greed, as I said, overspending on a coin, thinking we just have to have that one fancy piece, without making sure we aren't delving into a collecting niche we can't afford comfortably. Or maybe we can get sucked in into buying that grab bag, that loot box, you might score big. There are coins there worth way more than what I paid for. Of course I'm going to beat the odds and get that gold Julius Caesar. I'm the epicenter of the universe. I'm a winner. And then you don't get it. Nah, I'll get it next time. You get another box and you don't get it again. Third time's a charm and you don't get it. And then you realize I've just spent what that fancy coin I wanted so much was worth, but here I am with coins I do not want. We will get into what coins you can get in that vault box in just a moment, but here's the first red flag. The vault box slabs come with a little code. You can go into the vault box website, insert this code, and they will make you an immediate offer to buy back that coin from you. That's basically you being in a casino and cashing out your chips. Never mind the fact you're dealing with a historical artifact. Never mind the knowledge you could get from researching that coin. Or the collecting value. Screw all of that. That's a lottery ticket you, you paid for. And now you're just cashing it out. And even if you decide to keep the coin, remem remember the first rule of casinos. The house always wins. And you know what's heartbreaking about all of this? The whole thing sold out within hours. Alright, let's start with red core slab coins. Your box might have one of these or none at all. Let's see what they have and their average value. Before we start, another red flag. With ancient coins, just the information on the grade on the slab alone is not enough to determine if a coin is actually pretty or desirable at all. You really have to see the coin, not only a list. These, these were handmade th things. Some have pretty dice, others have ugly dice, some were nicely struck, others weakly struck, some were struck off center, etc, etc. Et so yeah, just reading what you can get and determining a value from a sheet, red flag number two. Okay, let's get into the list of coins. Okay, let's start with the absolutely fanciest things we can get. The likelihood of getting these is very low, but anyway, let's look into the coins. 
Okay, we start with the the main jewel of the crown, let's say. Um, a Julius Caesar Gold Aureus in NGCXF. Yeah, of course, this is a $15,000 coin, whatever, it's very expensive. Then we have a Byzantine Solidus of Justinian II. I think this is the very first coin that had a portrait of Christ. It's a very pretty coin, it's a very desirable coin, but once again, there's only one of them. Then we have a denarius struck by Brutus in 42 BC. That's another very desirable coin. And so far, I mean, these three coins are worth in the thousands. And sometimes it might be even in the five figures, but still, we're talking about three coins. Then we have a gold stator of Mithridates VI. These are relatively common coins, but they are, they're still very pretty. They still bring four figures commonly. Now we get into some Roman gold. We have a Vespasian gold aureus and a Domitian aureus. Now, mind you, they are in fine and VG condition. These are worn coins. I mean, Roman gold is always desirable, but now we're talking about coins that are a little bit unsightly because of the wear. They're still nice, but we're talking about coins maybe in the low thousands, $2,000, something like this. Then we have a couple of denarii, we have a denarius from the Civil War, from 68-69, that's a rare and desirable issue, although it's just in choice fine, so it's not necessarily a very pretty coin. And we have a, a, an error, we have a, a Sula Silver denarius, these denarii are very common, but this is a brockage error, error and it's about uncirculated, so that's an, an interesting novelty, although I don't know if this would bring such a heavy premium. <laughs> now here we have we have a proof that whoever is making this, or at least organizing this list, probably doesn't know a whole lot about ancient coins. We have two listings. Greek 600 to 550 BC, Ionian Electrum, EL, which means Electrum, so it's Electrum, Electrum, third stator, NGC, choice, very fine. And then we have another listing which talks about the exact same type of coin, just with different words. Greek, 600 to 550 BC, Ionian, Electrum, Electrum, third stator, choice, NGC, VF. So in, in the first listing it was NGC, choice, VF, now it's choice, NGC, VF. These are the same coin, but whatever. Moving on, we're entering the territory of coins that are worth maybe a thousand dollars, but but probably like less than that. So we have 18 um, Athenian Owl Silver Tetadrachma. These are probably the mass issue Owls. They're very common. They're choice AU, so they're very pretty coins. But still, in a very good day, slab, at a coin show, whatever, this is maybe a thousand, a thousand something dollars coin. Okay, now we're definitely looking into sub $1,000 coins. If you go into the market and you do a little research and you look. So we have a Judean Bar Kokhba Small Bronze, NGC Choice FX Star 5 out of 5 whatever coin. Well, this, I, I admit I don't know a whole lot about Judean coins, but that can't be excessively expensive. And then we get into a lot of Byzantine gold. Byzantine gold is probably one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest way to get into ancient gold. These are not expensive coins at all, at least like these common varieties that I'm looking at here. These are in VF plus, in very good condition, in a similar condition that we have here. These are maybe $700, $750 coins, so we're approaching the break-even point here. And we've only, we've only looked at like 20 coins or something. So we have a Justinian the first gold solidus. This is a common type. Justin the second. That's even more common. Although these are at least in in mint state. Um, we have Tiberius the second. This is also common. Maurice Tiberius, uh, Phocas, Heraclius. These are all common types. As I said, like eight hundred, seven hundred, sometimes six hundred dollar coins. And we close the red core list with some pretty common coins, frankly. There are silver victoriati from the time of the Punic Wars, 20 of them in mint state. Well, in mint state, these are quite interesting coins, although they're not rare, but I can't see these going for more than two, three. Okay, let's go for $300 or so. 
and the same would be applicable for the Mark Antony Legionary Denarii. These are very common, but they're normally ugly, they're normally very worn, so these are in very fine or choice very fine. So we're probably talking about 300, maybe 400 dollar coins for due to the demand that these coins have. So these are the red core coins. Um, as we've seen, I would say half of the red core coins, which are, you are not guaranteed to get, are either at the break even point or at most you're actually losing money. So let's go to the black core. The majority of the coins you can get are going to be black core coins. So let's see what kind of value are we talking about. Okay, we begin the black core with 26 VF units from Arabia Felix. These are imitations of the Athenian Owls, but these are not full units. We're talking about quarter units. And they're very fine, they're interesting, although they're not particularly sought after, so that doesn't push the prices up. And then we have we have bronze, normal bronze coins, very common from the Thessalian League. I mean, for the Arabian coins, we're talking about maybe hundred, a hundred dollar coins, one hundred and fifty. For the Thessalian League bronzes, we're talking about thirty dollar coins, forty dollar coins. Another mistake on their part, Lysamachus. It's Lysimachus, but well, that's a, that's a detail. I don't want to be pedantic here. Um, we have Choice Fine Drachma, then we have Silver Drachma Choice Fine, which is the same thing once more, and then we have Choice Very Fine Drachma. Um, coins of Lysimachus are very interesting, but they're not particularly, once again, rare or anything, so maybe we're talking about 200, 200 something dollar coins. Then we get to a series of Philip III Silver Drachma. These were struck in the style of Alexander the Great by his first successor, Philip III. These are very common and they're in a variety of grades, right? Choice Very Fine, Fine, Choice VF, once more, Fine VF and some even VG. I would say for VGs, these are sub $100 coins. Frankly, these are 80, 70, depending on the condition. VF coins a hundred and something at most a hundred and fifty dollar retail they're very common then we get to a series of alexander the great drachma now it doesn't specify here if these are lifetime or posthumous coins the posthumous coins are very common and they're once more they're a hundred a hundred and fifty dollar coins but i'm going to assume i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume these are lifetime coins which are a little bit more expensive so we have once more have choice fine and fine coins which would go for once again a hundred hundred fifty dollars or so lifetime vf um drachma maybe could be a little bit more expensive they could go for some 200 vg coins now they're sub 100 dollar coins then we have them once more being a little bit amateurish um, they're talk they're, they go like dolphin silver didrachma. They could specify that these are like from Magna Grecia, from uh, from this from the city of Tarentum most likely. That these are the drachma. These are heavier coins. They're quite pretty, although they're very common. So I mean, some of them are in VF, some of them are in XF. Once again, like all sorts of grades, and these would probably go from three hundred dollars down to like 150 in the uglier examples and for this particular type once more that's that's where you can't get the full picture of the image from the from the description alone uh, these coins a lot of them were made with worn dice some of them were made with wonderful dice some of them were made off center so there's a lot of variation in these particular coins for example that you can't grasp the quality of the coin just by this description you could have one of these didrachma in extremely fine and wonderful condition, but if half of the design is off the flan, well, the label is going to say, yeah, this is an XF, an almost uncirculated coin, but you, if you can't see the coin, you can't evaluate it. So there's that. Keep that in mind. All right, we have 50 tetrabols of Istiaia. Um, these are also very common and they're in fine condition, so these are probably like... $50 coins and there were there were some fakes very convincing fakes in the market that people called attention to these like some decades ago So uh, hopefully these didn't go into the slabs. I'm going to give NGC the benefit of the doubt there 
then we have a whole series of early classical Mesia drachma from oh these ones feature the gorgon these are very common as well but these are very interesting coins some of them almost uncirculated fine these are yeah but these are probably also like a hundred sub 100 dollar coins we're seeing a trend here like the nice black cores the probably like the uncommon types of black core you can get they're like in the 100 100 something dollar range so very far from the 650 they're asking for i'm going to speed up so you don't get bored and i still get the point once once again a, a bunch of once again a hundred and something 150 dollar coins a bunch of cappadocian drachma these are like hate late hellenistic very pretty coins but reasonably normal coins reasonably common then we have a whole bunch of Seleucid uh, silver drachma, oh, once again common, although people tend to pay a little bit more for these because generally they're quite pretty, the, the style is quite nice. So yeah, we have Antiochus the sixth, Demetrius the second, Alexander Balas, these are like the most common types. So once again, 150, maybe $200 range. Then we have also like a series of Parthian drachma. These are also relatively common and people have been giving them a little bit more attention recently. But yeah, VF, Choice Fine, VF, these conditions, these are once again like $100 coins. We then get to Roman coins, finally. Okay, we have some Teta drachma from Antioch, from Nero, Choice Fine. Yeah, these are, well, fine. Yeah, they have quite a bit of worn. So once again, 100 something dollar coins, maybe 150, depending on the style. We have some Augustus Denarii. Augustus is always in demand and, and commands strong prices. Although the condition is not the best choice, fine, fine. But still, these are probably like $200 coins due to it being Augustus. There are four very fine denarii of Augustus. But once again, what kind of Augustus denarii? If these are the common Gaius and Lucius late denarii, which he would strike later in his life, um, these, well, in VF, maybe they could go for 200. Um, if these are earlier types, these can actually go very, these can be very pricey. These can go up to like a thousand dollars or more, but it's quite likely being a black core that these are the common types. Then we have a series of Imperial Denarii, which are probably from common varieties, and they're only in fine condition. That is a bit of a red flag for me. Hadrian, um, Faustina Sr., a whole bunch of posthumous Faustina Denarii. These in fine condition, frankly, these are under $100. These are like $80 coins. Then we have Antoninus Pius. His Denarii are also very common. At least these are in VF. Um, Faustina the second in fine, Faustina the second also choice fine, Faustina fine, a bunch of fines. Um, Lucius Verus, Lucius Verus can be a little bit more expensive, like probably like in the 120, 130. Marcus Aurelius is always in high demand, although these are fine, very fine. Yeah, these could be over $150 or so, depending on the condition. Uh, so yeah, once again, coins ranging from the um, 80, 70 dollars to maybe in some cases 150 or so. Now we're getting into some much cheaper coins. Uh, Commodus has struck a lot of coins and they're generally ugly, but the grade doesn't represent this because a coin can be in VF, but it can be of bad style. Septimius Severus, okay, these coins are an extra fine, but they're also once again very common. Severus Alexander as well, Julia Domna, Caracalla, these are frankly sub 100 dollar coins maybe there around the 100 dollar mark in a good day we have geta we have elagabalus we have the um, julia maesa these are also 100 sub 100 dollar coins we then enter the firmly under 100 dollar coins these are definitely 100 under severus alexander in xf or choice xf um, okay, Orbiana, it's, although it's just in fine, she is rare, so she can be over 100. Maximinus Trax, Gordian. Gordian coins are incredibly common. These are like $50 coins. And then we get into some, like at the bottom of the list, we have some like really affordable coins. A posthumous, uh, Antoninianus, Gallienus, even if it's MS, like what kind of coin? 
uh, Aurelian, Probus, Diocletian, Constantius, and Galerius. We're talking about coins that could be in the $60 range down to the $35, $40. So, yeah, keep that in mind. There were more coins in the list, but I don't want to bore you. And I think I've made my point that the coins you can get in this box are not good value for money. But there's also the thing that if we consider the boxes are worth $649 plus taxes, so let's let's say it costs you $700 to buy this thing, you can get some pretty spectacular ancient coins on retail for that kind of money right now. And without the random casino box thing, you can actually just get them coin you want. How about we go over some examples, huh? Do you like Greek coins? $700 could get you an Athenian tetadrachma in pretty decent condition. Maybe not mint state, maybe not with a full crest, but definitely a coin firmly in the VF range. You want some more Greek coins? You could get a common posthumous tetadrachma of Alexander the Great in the VF range, in pretty good style, for some $450. And you're left with $250 for that you could buy a silver drachma in VF and even a couple of bronze coins with the pocket changer left. Maybe you would rather have some coins from the Hellenistic kingdoms. A teta drachma of Antiochus VII and one uh, from Ptolemy II as well would cost you, both of them, around that same amount of money. Maybe you enjoy some Roman coins? For 700, you can definitely assemble a five good emperors set in silver. If we consider common types in the good, fine, lower VF range, you could get a Nerva for 200, and you would have $125 for each of the remaining four emperors. Completely doable. And don't get me started on the more affordable third century coins. This kind of money could lend you like a full set of the Severan dynasty, or maybe over 10 coins from the 3rd century crisis. And how about some ancient gold? Common Byzantine Solidi are well within this budget, in a very respectable VF grade, for example. Solidi from the 6th to the mid 7th centuries are common, and you can find pieces for under $700. And I'm talking about the full Solidus. If we look at the Semesis and the Tremesis, which are smaller pieces, oh, then the, you can definitely buy this with this kind of budget. So, yeah, I think I've made my point. It's a shame that people fall for, the, for this kind of trickery. Hopefully with this video I've prevented one or two of you from falling into this trap. As you can see, it is not good value for money. Now I want to hear from you. What kinds of coins would you buy with $700? Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and I'll see you soon.